Back here in the words of Rabbi Tatz, when it comes to Bechira, so we're speaking about this idea that you could be a, a revolutionary person who uses his Bechira's free will to make strong and brave and courageous decisions. You can literally overturn worlds and you could create new things with your Bechira. But what happens to a person who goes through life and it looks like they're doing so many things, but they're never really using their bechir, they're never really using their free will. So he says like this, Even if the action that you're going to do, which is good, and it's a, a positive, beneficial action, but it's just, a TV, it's, it's very natural for you to do such a thing. Instinctive. instinctive. And you are drawn to do that particular thing really by your instinct. Right? There, are, there are animals that can be very kind animals. But that animal that's doing an act of kindness is not doing it because it's having a, 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 a philosophical conversation inside of its head of should I save the animal that's drowning in the, in the river right now or not? It's an instinct that when you see somebody drowning, if you're a beaver or whatever you might be, so you jump in and you save the one that's drowning. And if I'm a, a wild animal out there in the plains of Africa, and I decide to be a little bit rough and tough with another animal and end up breaking its neck and devouring it, so it wasn't that I was caught in this, this quandary of should I be cruel and mean and vicious right now, or should I just be a tame and docile animal? The instinct of that animal is to do what he does. So when we go through our lives, and we are doing things in our lives, are we acting out of bechira, out of free will, because I'm choosing to actually do this particular action? Or is it just instinct and just the regular nature, the way in which I do things, that continues to pull me along in that direction? And therefore he writes, Gam maisim toivim. It's possible that good deeds that a person does, it's possible that you could end up doing an action, which is a wonderful, amazing action, chesed, tzedakah, put on tefillin, uh, make a bracha, whatever you might do, but it's very likely that it could express itself without any bechir, without any free will at all. It's just your habitual way in which you do things. When a person has actions that they are, they are habituated to do, even though that they are good and they are desired things, HaKadosh Baruch is very pleased when he sees you doing good stuff. Nevertheless, they never merit the category of being called an action of Bechira, of free will. Actions of, of a habit are not able to be matzmiach, they're not able to sprout or to, or, or to bring about reward. Or elevated levels of spirituality. Like when a person does an action out of bechira of free will. So that means that I could be doing everything right. Meaning if I get out the checklist, from the time I wake up in the morning till I go to sleep at night, I check everything off in the right way. Woke up, washed my hands, said moda'ani, went to the shul, put on my tefillin, daven shachris, had breakfast, ate my bread, washed my hands, benched afterwards, went to work, I was honest in my business, I didn't cheat, I did everything according to the halach, according to the law. Came home, learned with my kids, went back to shul, davim min chamar, went to a class at night, learned a little bit, came home, talked nicely to my wife, went to sleep, said shema, checked it all off. I did everything right the whole day. Says of Tats, but you didn't think about anything that you're doing. You, you, you didn't, you, what? No, so again, if that's the nature of my life, if that's what I do, so then I'm not a, I'm not a, a creature of free will. I'm a creature of habit. Now, those are good habits to have. And you're, okay, you're, those are good habits for you to have. But you have to know that as you go through your daily, uh, uh, your daily routine, so if you're not 
utilizing free will in the things that you are doing, so then you're not really growing. You're not advancing, you're not improving, you're not elevating yourself. You're going along, behergal with habitual actions that keep the ball moving, keep you going in the right direction, but there's no inherent change that's taking place inside of you as a result. Now, you're pointing out, it could be that 30 years ago, you had to make major decisions in your life, and you decided, I want to be a person who wakes up in the morning and washes my hands and goes to shul and puts on tefillin and keeps Shabbos. You're right. So all of that was your triumphant moments of Bechira. The question is, is that for the last 20, 25 years, or let's say the last 10 years, yeah, or the last five years, let's say, so. yeah, let's, let, let's say, let's ask, how many real moments of Bechira, free will, did you have in your day-to-day spiritual routine? That's what we're talking about over here. But you can't have anything, because no matter what you encounter <clears throat> throughout the day, you're going to refer to what will the Torah say, what will the Talmud say, and that's how I'm going to conduct my but you don't think about it. But you don't think about it after a while. That's his point. If I'm not thinking, and I'm ju- if, if, I, if I'm not thinking and I'm just doing, so then I'm not exercising any free will. I might have exercised free will 30 years ago, but today I'm not. When I woke up this morning and I ended up in shul, there was no bechir over there. Of course, I'm going to shul this morning. So I don't get the reward for going to the synagogue in the morning because. Where else am I going to go? Well, coming to a retirement also gives a reward. Yeah, that's you for sure. Sh- you could be on the golf course. <clears throat> you could, but then everything I do on the golf course, I will check off with what I have to do to be correct. How uh, I play, how I... Uh, no, 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 but that's not a mitzvah. So, so we're, we're talking over... We're talking. you define free will? Yeah, that, that's... <laughs> we have about this much left to go. Yeah, I mean, that's, to me, that's where it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, So, so that's so. This is the this is so. This is the point that we're making. This is the point that we're making. He's already he's already discussed this several times, and it's going to be a theme that runs throughout. That free will really is only when a person finds themselves in a situation where they're being forced to make a decision. But if I do things in my life naturally. So, and because I'm just used to doing them, so that is not an exercise in free will. That is just the way in which I live my life. For it, 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 it could, it could, again, it could, it could, it could be, again, it could be, if I wake up one morning and I'm really, really tired, and you know what? I look at my clock and I look outside and the sun is still down and it's, I'm not, I'm just, I'd like to sleep. And I fall back asleep and the alarm goes off again. And I look at my watch and I'm, there's like weights that are just pulling me down into the bed. So then, so then at that point, it could be that if, I, if I'm stuck in a situation where I must push past the inertia and I have to make a decision, will I sleep or will I get up right now? So then that could be a free will decision. But that on a regular day that I get out of bed, so not much free will in there. Meaning, that's, that's, I want, I've, before I went to sleep last night, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get up the next morning and come and dive in the shul. I wanted to give a class. I wanted to go to a shul. I wanted to learn. <clears throat> I, was, I was planning on eating breakfast and saying a blessing on my apple before I would eat it. So there's no free will there. Now, if you're a person who doesn't you know, usually make blessings, and then you're looking at the apple, you say, I really should make a blessing. He said, nah, what's the big deal? But then you decide too. Yes, that's free will. That's a different story. So when we're, when we're defining free will, you're right, there's going to be global free will in a person's life, but we're talking about what decisions can a person make that's going to affect the greatest changes that are inside of them. So that's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're referring to over here. So he said like this, Adam Shahapach, um, yeah, Adam Shahapach the Baal Tshuva. So let's say that a person wants to become a Baal Tshuva. Now, the real language of a Baal Tshuva in the, in the Gemara is someone that was religious, somebody who knows what's right and what's wrong, and he makes a terrible mistake, 
And then he does tshuva, he repents because he feels bad for what he did. That's the real story of a Baal tshuva in the, in the Gemara. The Baal tshuva that we refer to in the world today are people that were never religious, and then at a certain point in life they decided to become religious. I don't know if you, if you know anybody like that. But, yeah, but so, so now I don't, know, I don't know exactly which one Rabbi Tatz is speaking about over here, but he says like this, Adam shehapich le Baal tshuva, a person who becomes a Baal tshuva, he chooses for himself many, many decisions he has to make. He has to make a lot of decisions. He was eating Big Macs, he was on Saturdays, he was over here on, 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 uh, on, on, uh, on what do you call it, on, uh, on Yom Kippur, he was busy eating. So he has to make a lot, a lot of decisions over here. The koshas, and there's some of them are very difficult. Till he reaches his new position. So now he gets to the point, he's a religious guy. He, he davins, he makes brachas, he puts on his tefillin, he keeps Shabbos, he keeps Yom Tev, no question, he'll eat the, the, the matzah, he'll t- shake his lulav, it's all there. Now, he got to a place where it's no longer Bechira. It's no longer a choice. Sukkah is going to come, I'm not going to sit in the sukkah. I'm not going to shake the lulav in the esrog. On, on Pesach, I'm not going to eat matzah. Of course I'm going to do all these things. Now, of course, he says, you still, you, sh- you should know that you are still, Tommy Yelo, you're still getting reward for all of the previous um, decisions that you made to put yourself in that direction. Even though the initial hasmat, the initial diligence that you had to make one decision after another is, is no longer in your life because you're already there. But if it wouldn't have been for those decisions, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing today. So every time that you put on tefillin in the morning, so it, it's like the residual effect. Kodesh Baruch Hu goes back, he looks at that time in your life when you were struggling to get up in the morning and put on tefillin. And because of that decision that you made over there, that's why 30 years later, you're always at Dominion, putting on your tefillin. So that means today when you put on tefillin, you're still getting the residual for what you did 25, 30 years ago. But you're not getting a, a reward per se today, so to speak, for the, for the act of putting on the tefillin, because it's unconscious or subconscious, whatever the word would be, that you're, that you're doing it. And we'll see. So he says... Um, <clears throat> But right now, the original battle that you fought, it's gone. It disappeared. You cannot create new reward for yourself when you put on today's tefillin. And he says, if you, if you could find a person who from their childhood was just like they were, they either they were born that way, they were born good, they were trained at a very young age to do the right thing, and they've been doing the right thing for the last 35, 40, 50 years of their life, it's possible that that person never tasted the pleasure of making a real decision in his whole life. So we're aiming, the goal over here that we're aiming for is, I want to get to the place where I'm making, where I'm making decisions. Um, a little bit more, we have time? A little bit more. Yeah? Okay, you know what? This is like a, a separate point. We'll save that till next time. Okay. Shkaich to everybody. Have a good day of free will.